we are live now so good evening doctors and all the participants i shumon on behalf of shield healthcare welcome uh, you in another very interesting uh, session with the uh, uh, international uh, human embryology research academy that is i here new delhi and the theme of the program is all about cleavage stage morphology let me introduce the uh, coordinators of the program um, uh, nidhishin madam uh, yoshita tanwar madam and uh, nancy sharma ma'am so let me uh, first introduce dr anidhi singh madam uh, she is the medical director of uh, tejashwi uh, women's uh, wellness and maternity uh, center varanasi she is the senior consultant embryologist at panacea hospital varanasi she is the assistant professor of uh, pyar panacea institute of interdisciplinary research and educational academy varanasi and uh, co distributor jeans india art bank varanasi branch so she has uh, teaching experience of more than 18 years and multiple many national and international publications and uh, she is obviously a member of uh, iher next uh, uh, yoshida tanwar madam uh, madam data analysis in biotechnology and she is associated with wasis fertility uh, currently working as a clinical embryologist at wasis fertility uh, center uh, banashankari uh, bangalore and uh, she has uh, worked as a senior embryology and lab in charge new life india fertility uh, clinic private limited to new delhi uh, she is the sm certified clinical embryologist and certified in advanced skill set embryology training uh, conducted by mark Center of Excellence in Clinical Embryology, Kasturba Medical College, Manipal, and uh, she is the member of S India S S R M Society, and obviously as a member of uh, I here. And uh, last uh, but not the least, uh, Nancy Sharma, ma'am, Senior Consultant Embryologist, Department of Reproductive Medicine, Jinda Life Yap and Ascent Memorial Nursing Home, and uh, she is also a S M Certified Embryologist, Embryo and Blastocyst Biopsy Training. Uh, she did from. Uh, embryology and uh, PGT Academy UCL, uh, embryology certificate and course uh, from Indian Fertility Society. She has um, uh, work experience of about 10 years in the field of ART, presented many papers in many international and national uh, conferences as a presenting author. Uh, she is presenting a PhD scholar and uh, she did her postgraduate in molecular biology and she is a team, uh, team member uh, in IHERA and the editor of Gametolot and apart from that she is a member of many prestigious national and international bodies so that is ASRM, ASRA, ASIFS, ESR and IHERA. So with the short introduction I uh, request uh, uh, Yoshita madam uh, to take over the session uh, for further questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, and Thank you Suman. So today, uh, good evening all. Today, I'll welcome you all to our today's webinar. That is the theme of uh, all about morphology of cleavage stage. Uh, so I welcome our founders and co-founders, Dr. Ved Prakash, right, please. Uh, he is a past I, president uh, of AIDS. Uh, Yashita, there is no need to read the uh, okay. that CV. Okay, sir. Just okay. uh, start the program. So I welcome Dr. Ved Prakash, sir, Dr. Sanjay Shukla, sir, and Dr. Charudas Joshi, sir. And I request all of all of you to moderate this session. Thank you, Yashita. Dr. Suman, can I have CV for first speaker, please? Yes. So our first speaker is Dr. Gaurav Mittal and Dr. Gaurav Mittal is uh, currently clinical embryologist, OSS Fertility Mangalore, cluster man, uh, manager, embryology department, Karnataka, OSS Fertility and teaching faculty member of OSS school. Uh, he is a MS, uh, MCE, Monarch University, uh, diploma in uh, reproductive medicine, uh, sciences and Australia bachelor's in medicine and surgery. And he got some awards and publication. He uh, got a budding embryologist of the year's National Fertility Award 2023, Health Award e poster on reproductive outcome in cryptojospermia individual, ASRM 2022 e poster on the effect of COVID 19 on sperm in Indian men in ASHRAE 2022. So over to Dr. Gaurav Mittal. Dr. Gaurav Mittal is going to speak all about the cleavage stage morphology. Thank you so much, Vichar, for that lovely introduction. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Gaurav Mittal, and I work at Oasis Fertility Mangalore. And today, we'll be exploring all about cleavage stage embryo morphology. So as we all know, the journey of an embryo begins um, at 
uh, fertilization. So this is when an oocyte and a sperm fuse. We check for the fertilization on day one. At this stage, we're expected to see two pro, uh, pro nuclei and two, uh, two polar bodies. Then this zygote undergoes uh, rapid cell division. It goes from a single cell to a two cell stage and then to a four cell stage to an eight cell stage becomes a morula and then finally it becomes a blastocyst. So the cleavage stage is the stage of embryo development that starts uh, that comes between the zygote stage and the morula stage. So uh, the day two, the day three embryos are uh, generally called as cleavage stage embryos. So now let's look at some uh, why exactly is cleavage stage embryo morphology important. First, uh, it's an indicator of embryo quality. Uh, in fact, it is the first stage at which we can really comment on the quality of an embryo. Um, secondly, it is a predictor of implantation potential. So uh, it's very simple, a uh, good cleavage stage embryo would give us better results uh, with regards to implantation and clinical pregnancy compared to a poor cleavage stage embryo. And thirdly, uh, it helps us in selecting and deselecting embryos for transfer and cryopreservation. So now let's look at when exactly do we assess these embryos. Um, this is established by the Istanbul consensus. So we do our fertilization checks somewhere around 17 plus or minus one hour. At this stage, you're expected to see your zygotes at the pro-nuclear stage. You are expected to see two pro-nuclei uh, pro and two polar bodies. Uh, you then do a day two assessment at 44 plus or minus one hours, where you're expected to see the embryo reach the four cell stage. The day three embryo assessment is done at 68 plus or minus one hour, where the embryo is supposed to reach the eight cell stage. The morula assessment is done at 92 plus or minus two hours on day four. And a blastocyst assessment is done at 116 plus or minus two hours on day five. Now it's important to note that uh, this is what's been established by the Istanbul consensus. And this may vary from lab to lab, but this is what's uh, followed in most of the labs all across the world. So now let's look at what exactly makes a cleavage stage embryo a cleavage stage embryo. Uh, first is the number of plastomeres that it has. Ideally, a day two cleavage stage embryo should have four blastomeres and a day three a cleavage stage embryo should have eight blastomeres. Then comes fragmentation. So fragmentation, if you go by the definition, it is an extracellular membrane bound cytoplasmic structure that has uh, that is supposed to be uh, more than 45 micrometers, uh, sorry, less than 45 micrometers diameter in day two and less than 40 micrometers diameter in day three embryos. But in simple English, I think it's just when the embryo undergoes rapid cell division after the zygote stage, uh, when this uh, division doesn't go according to the plan, um, sometimes what happens is these cells, uh, rather than forming into blastomeres, they break down into smaller uh, cells, which are known as, uh, which is known as fragmentation. So based on the degree of uh, fragmentation, embryos can be either mildly fragmented, moderately fragmented or severely fragmented. Uh, mild fragmentation is when the embryo has about 10% or less fragmentation. Moderate is when the fragmentation is 10 to 25% and severe is when more than 25% of the embryo is fragmented. Next comes our multinucleation. So, as I said, uh, in the zygote stage, you are expected to see two pro-nuclei. And when these, uh, when the cell division starts, these two pro-nuclei are expected to fuse together to form a single nuclei of the embryo. If for some reason this does not happen uh, and we see multiple nuclei, this means that the, there's something wrong with the embryo and these embryos are usually not used for either transfer or um, freezing and we generally 
uh, discard these embryos. And lastly, is your cell size and symmetry. So uh, for a day two embryo, we are expected to see four uh, evenly sized blastomeres. And for a day three eight, um, embryo, we are expected to see eight evenly sized blastomeres. Now, if these blastomeres are not evenly sized and are not in perfect symmetry in the embryo, uh, we're expected uh, the expected results with these embryos tend to reduce. So we touched upon fragmentation earlier. Now let's look at some photos with varying levels of uh, embryo fragmentation. The first embryo here is that of a day two embryo. Um, this is a beautiful day two embryo which has four evenly sized blastomeres with no fragmentation at all. Uh, in the second embryo, it's again a four uh, four cell stage day two embryo where you can clearly see three blastomeres, but in the fourth blastomeres there's a bit of fragmentation uh, from about twelve o'clock to seven o'clock position. In the third photo, you can clearly see three blastomeres, but the fourth one looks like it's fragmented totally. And in the last photo, you can only see two blastomeres and the other two look like they're fragmented. So th that is what fragmentation of an embryo, cleavage stage embryo looks like. So now based on, uh, now that we've discussed what exactly is a cleavage stage embryo and when to do our assessment of these cleavage stage embryos, let's look at the uh, embryo grading system that we use on our labs to grade these embryos. Now keep this in mind that this again comes from the Istanbul consensus, but uh, it can be true that some of the labs follow their own grading systems, but this is what is uniformly used for most of the labs. So according to the Istanbul consensus, a grade one good quality embryo would have less than 10% fragmentation, would show state specific cell size and would show no signs of multinucleation. Um, a grade two fair embryo would have some uh, fragmentation of somewhere between 10 to 25%. It would show state specific cell size for majority of its cells. And again, it shouldn't show any signs of multinucleation. Uh, lastly, grade three embryo, a poor embryo is that which has severe fragmentation. Uh, the cell size are not really state specific and there is evidence of multinucleation in grade three embryos. So now that we've discussed the grading system and we know what a, a grade one, grade two, grade three embryo is, Let's look at some optimal cleavage stage embryos. The photo on the left is that of a day two optimal uh, cleavage stage embryo. You can clearly see four equally sized blastomeres. They are arranged beautifully in a 3D tetrahedral arrangement. And you can see there's less than 10% fragmentation. In fact, uh, I don't think there is fragmentation at all in the first picture. In the second picture, it's that of a day three eight cell stage uh, cleavage stage embryo. Again, uh, there are eight equally sized mononucleated blastomeres, and again, there's less than 10% fragmentation in this embryo as well. So now we've seen a good quality embryo. We've uh, discussed the grading system. We've, we know what a poor quality embryo is. Now let's look at some of the factors that affect the cleavage stage embryo morphology. So first of all, it's going to be your patient factors. Here it can be the age of the patient. Um, usually advanced maternal age is associated with poor embryo quality. It can be uh, high sperm uh, DFI, can be conditions like endometriosis or PCOS. Um, and then there are environmental factors where uh, your exposure to toxins, pollutants, and radiation can cause DNA damage, which can in, uh, in turn lead to impaired embryo quality. And then comes our laboratory factors. This is where we affect the quality of the embryos inside the lab. Uh, this includes everything right from the expertise level of the embryologist, our culture system, our incubators, our uh, culture media, our um, quality control measures that we take. So all these factors 
together affect the embryo quality morphology embryo morphology to an extent so uh, now that we know that uh, we uh, we've got all of these factors that affect the embryo quality is there any significance of the cleavage stage embryo morphology uh, the simple answer to this is yes better embryos would lead to better outcomes always and this statement is supported by a lot of scientific evidence but uh due to time constraints i'm only going to be discussing these three studies that i've looked into so the first study by zu et al in 2014 they looked at uh the clinical pregnancy rates the live birth rates and miscarriage rates in a good quality embryo group and a poor quality embryo group um it wasn't surprising to see that there was a higher clinical pregnancy rate and higher live birth rate achieved with the good quality embryos and a lower miscarriage rate again uh, achieved with the lower quality embryos compared to the poor quality group similarly this study again in 2014 by uh, oron et al looked at the clinical pregnancy rates and live birth rates again in a good quality embryo transfer group compared them to a poor quality embryo transfer group uh, again there was a higher cpr and a higher live birth rate achieved with the good quality embryos compared to the poor quality embryos then um this study by renman et al in 2014 they looked at day 2 cleavage stage embryos and they looked at uh, the live birth rates with embryos that had four equally sized blastomeres and compared them to embryos that had less than four blastomeres uh, there was a significant difference here higher live birth with the evenly sized uh, embryos higher live birth rate again in embryos that showed less than 10% fragmentation compared to embryos that showed more than 50% fragmentation so now that we've discussed everything we've uh, touched upon the embryo developmental timeline the checkpoints of an embryo assessment uh we've looked at the istanbul grading consensus the factors that cause the uh poor morphology of a cleavage stage embryo we've looked at how a good quality embryo should look like and uh, we've looked at uh we've looked at the evidence uh, on why good quality embryos lead to better results So now let's look at what are we doing currently in our labs and where do we go from here. So I think now most of the labs all across the world have moved on to um, extended blastocyst culture. Unless it's indicated, cleavage stage embryo checks are not done at all. Uh, then pre-genetic testing with embryo biopsy has become. a very important method to select and deselect embryos for transfer uh, we no longer i mean uh, we can do a cleavage stage embryo biopsy as well but mostly it is done at a blastocyst stage then we have our time lapse incubators it is innovation in our field and this in uh, in conjunction with the various artificial intelligence tools that we have Uh, available in the market right now it helps us in again selecting and deselecting embryos for transfer which can give us better clinical outcomes and then lastly non invasive pgt uh, this is still in the research stage uh, this is a method where uh, the spent culture medium from the culture dish of the embryos is uh, assessed and the chromosomal status of the embryos that were cultured in that medium uh can be looked into but this again is a fairly new uh, technique and there's still a lot of uh, research required before we can use it routinely in our labs so with that i come to my conclusion uh we've looked at the grading system of the cleavage stage embryos and we've looked at how it is influenced by multiple factors including us as well inside the lab 
we've looked at how the grading system is based on the multiple characteristics of an embryo as well. Um, how the number of cells, the symmetry of an embryo, the uh, fragmentation level of an embryo impacts the cell morphology. Uh, we know for a fact now that an ideal day two embryo would have four blastomeres and an ideal day three embryo would have eight blastomeres. Um, and we've seen with scientific evidence how better uh, quality cleavage stage embryos would lead to better clinical outcomes. So with that, I come to the end of my talk. Uh, this is the references. These are the studies that I used in this presentation today. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Thank you. That is Thank me. you, Dr. Gaurav. Thank, Thank you so much, sir. Very uh, nice lecture. And Thank I you, hope sir. everything was very uh, clear. But there are some questions uh, from uh, our participants. Sure, sir. Uh, one is, what is the reason of that uh, fragmentation in the cleavage stage uh, embryo? Sir, so, uh, yeah, common reasons. The so common reasons, like I said, the patient factor is a very big factor in this. Uh, the age of the patients, the sperm quality of the husband can be a factor their exposure to pollutants, um, their exposure to radiation can be a factor. And then our own expertise on uh, techniques like ICSI can be a factor in this as well, sir. Okay. Dr. Charu, you have wrote, uh, wrote some uh, points over there. Can oh, you please can... explain, Dr. Charu? Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Hello, Dr. Charu. The... Uh... Please mute, sir. No, yar. Doctor Charulata Chatterjee, are you there? Sir. Yeah, yeah. So you uh, uh, wrote one answer on that. Uh, I saw your uh, that on chat, na? Can you please? Yeah. Uh, so that's the advanced maternal age. Um, yeah, yeah. What I wrote is uh, that also affects the specific. Quality of the gametes, either it is a sperm or a, and when, uh, as for long as the lab factor is concerned, the media, the pH, everything like you know, the oxidative stress, which is you know, oriented from the lab side, can also affect the quality and the uh, means uh, uh, causes for the fragmentation. Mm -hmm. So, there is one more question, Gaurav. Yes, what sir. are the technical factors, especially embryologic factor? which are responsible for poor quality embryo? So honestly, it starts with the expertise of the embryologist. I think all of us, when we were starting out, um, I think all of us had poor quality embryos to begin with. And then with the expertise, with knowledge on how to select the best sperm, I think the embryo quality also improved. So that obviously is one of the biggest factors. Um, and then again, like ma'am just recently touched upon, uh, sir, I think it's the pH of the culture medium, the particular batch of culture medium that we're using, uh, our quality control measures that we're taking in the lab. So all these factors combinedly, uh, combine and affect the quality from our end. The other thing is if the male factor, if sperm DNA fragmentation is high, the embryos will be fragmented because it yes, increases the oxidative stress in the culture and uh, that is the one other. Yeah, so for that, we've got uh, newer methods of sperm selection that helps us in reducing sperm DFI. So methods like um, MAX and microfluidics can, to an extent, bring down the sperm DFI levels. Mm -hmm. So uh, one more thing I uh, want to add over here, especially for embryology uh, factors. I think uh, we should uh, have some proper uh, protocols and SOP in our lab, and we should follow that uh, things because that SOP is one thing which uh, I think most of the labs are in a uh, small city and they are missing these things. Now we have the time has come and we have to follow these SOPs protocol properly. So Thanks, we will sir. get a good result out, uh, out of this. Right? 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Gaurav, for one thank you so lecture. much. Sir. So thank we you, can sir. move to uh, second lecture. Uh, Dr. Thank Charu Da Joshi. Dr. Charu. He's on mute. Okay. Uh, can we start next? Uh, maybe he's there. So our next speaker is Aranta Lakshmi, and she is going to. Can you please uh, show me that lecture name? Yeah, is there any role for early cleavage check in the era of time lapse? And uh, uh, Dr. B. Aranta Lakshmi is consultant and senior clinical embryologist in Janani Trichy Fertility Center. First woman from India certified as a reproductive embryologist from American College of Embryology with highest score ever in the exam. First Indian honored as embryologist of the month uh, by M. Paul. SRA certified, uh, certified clinical embryologist 2021. PG diploma in clinical embryology in Chetinad Academy of Research and Education under Professor Dr. Pandya Nataraj and won gold medal for university first rank. Completed MBBS and MD Physiology, won Best uh, Pedagogy Award, sorry for uh, wrong pronunciation, won first prize in ASP conducted on World Embryologist Day, completed embryo biopsy training at Meta, faculty in embryology for IC, Indian Council of Ops and Gynecology certificate, uh, certificate course in reproductive medicine and faculty and national and international conference and presented many papers and CPD active ASHRAE member and life member of MCOL, IFS, ISR and ACE. Over to Dr. Ananta Lakshmi. Thank you so much for this introduction, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. There is uh, one announcement I am going to start that here because she has prepared so many things uh, to make it interactive. So I think all the participant has to participate in polling also. There will be poll in between the uh, lectures. So please uh, be active participants. Okay, over to Ananta. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Today, uh, good evening, everybody. Today, I'm going to discuss about is there any role of for early cleavage check in the era of time lapse? As uh, my previous speaker, Dr. Gaurav said, uh, today we are uh, actually lagging time, and we are not uh, concentrating on checking the morphology, fertilization check like that. So uh, I feel that uh, this topic is uh, important for today's discussion, and let us move on to the topic. In this topic, I'm going to introduce what is uh, early cleavage check and then something about morphokinetics. And as everybody expect, we need some literature evidence about this topic. And based on this, can we select the embryos or not? And how to conclude this? To introduce, traditionally, as I earlier said earlier, that uh, scoring and selection of embryos is done only through the microscopic evaluations based on their morphological features. So this was very well explained by my previous speaker. The point here is actually we uh, spend time in selecting uh, the embryos based on the morphology or not. So I need to know how our audience react to these questions. So now we have uh, we can have the polling for the First question and the second question. Everybody, can you see the questions? So you can start your polling. Start answering the questions that you are seeing on the screen.
do you have the habit of doing fertilization check tell whether it is s or no can we have the second question ma'am uh, we do have the results of the first question ma'am shall i share it yeah yes it is 88% and no is from 12% of the people actually that is the, the reason second question i will launch ma'am and here is the second question what time will you do the fertilization check after icsi 88% of the people have answered yes so now you should tell the time at which you are doing the fertilization check can we have the results now yes ma'am great 24 hours after by 20% of the people 16 hours later it is answered by 25% and 20 hours it is by 11% and 18 hours after icsi is i uh, was answered by 44% so till now we don't know which is the right answer can we move on to the second one third one sorry mm -hmm. what time will you do the fertilization check after ivf i don't know whether uh, many of us are doing ivf or not but uh, still uh, ivf uh, has been done by pure clinics so at least for uh, at least for exam sake let us say we should know what is the time to check fertilization after ivf can we have the answers now it is 24 hours was answered by 23% of the people and 16 hours was answered by 21% and 20 hours after 18% and 18 hours after 38% so i think this is the last question for this right ma'am yes ma'am so for uh, regarding fertilization check it is uh, important to do to rule out your 1 pn and 3 pn even if you can get that 1 pn and 3 pn stage embryos even after icsi so it is important to do fertilization check and for icsi it is 16 to 18 hours there is a uh, what to say gap of 2 hours because we cannot follow the time very stringently for ivf it is usually done 18 to 20 hours so that when not later than 20 hours so with this we can move on to our next uh, into the topic so because of this strict timing our morphological assessment and the developmental competence of the embryo are not strongly correlated so i think many of us uh, many of you will agree to this so why this is happening because we are always tired of seeing microscope and we are having lots and lots of work to do so we are just ignoring the some of the important things so the reasons given in the literature are high degree of inter observer and intra observer variability in the morphology and there is a non rigid definitions of grading 
either uh, if you take the older textbooks it will be given something and now we are following the journals and the consensus which we are giving for grading we are depending on them so the, till now there is non rigid definitions for grading system either for cleavage stage embryo or the blastocyst so and uh, each and every textbooks or the consensus if you take they would have given the exact timing like 22 hours 24 hours 44 hours 60 hours like that so we cannot follow the timing and we cannot come in the midnight and check those uh, uh, embryos and uh, for that precise timing due to these reasons we don't have correlation between morphology and the developmental competence and so we are uh, just uh, putting a stop full stop for morphology and our, uh, our just I, do, I should say we are at least putting a comma for morphology and we totally started to depend on depend on morphokinetics which is upcoming and this is uh, given uh, very uh, accurately by our time lapse what is morphokinetics morpho means shape and kinetics means movement so we are correlating the morphology with the cell division that is the movement of the embryo this refers to the time specific morphological changes during embryo development providing dynamic information on your fertilized oocyte of the egg can we do that manually no it is not possible so we are depending on the time lapse for this what does time lapse gives us it gives a quick morphological observation per embryo and uh, in uh, during a few uh, hours and minutes it can give up to 6000 images per embryo during a culture and one important thing is during our fertilization check or cleavage check we will be afraid that whether we are after, we are causing injury to the embryo by changing in temperature or osmolality like that so this time lapse enables an embryologist to play and replay the development and also evaluate the morphological features without exposing the embryos to the suboptimal culture conditions that is the main advantage of this but in time lapse also they have given so many parameters like t0 t bp2 tpn tpna like that what are all these the time for IVF or the ICSI is taken as T0 and the time for extrusion of the second polar body is taken as T, TB2 and TPN is the fertilization timing and TPNA is appearance of individual pronuclei and there is TPNF that is the time of pronuclei disappearance and there is something called TZ and T2 to T9. What is that time to two cell, three cell like that it goes on till nine discrete cells. And TSC is the first evidence of compaction, like blastocyst also for this uh, terminology expands. This is a picture which tells you clearly about these uh, terminologies. Here, this is the formation of two polar bodies. So this is TPB and this is T0. And you can see PNA, that is appearance of flow nuclei and formation. This is T2. This is important for this today's topic, that is time for two cell stage in time lapse also you have uh, different uh, terminologies like again based on these three uh, four uh, timings they are again uh, uh, categorizing some terminologies that is cc2a 2b like that what is that it is the time division uh, time taken for the first cell division by the cell so as an embryologist we should not uh, be actually see the cell as a uh, uh, what to say at a, as a static thing it is two cell we can select four cell it is we can select like that we should not do like that we should understand the basic biology of the cell and what is happening inside exactly we should try to understand that and then we should select our embryos for this they have concluded that ecc1 that is uh, embryo cell cycle one that is they have taken the time for two cell stage minus the time taken for to polar body extrusion. This is regarded as duration of first cell division, that is our mitosis. And comes the second terminology, that is ECC2, that is T4, that is appearance of four cell stage embryo, and the time for two cell stage. When you subtract this, you get the duration of second cell cycle. So all these terminologies are used in the, by the time lapse to select the embryos. So now with this introduction, I want to know whether you know what is early cleavage or not. Let us start our the polling question. What does early cleavage actually means? 
it is two cell stage at fertilization check or two cell stage at time of 25 to 27 hours it is two cell stage on day 2 or two cell stage after 23 hours you can start polling Can we have the answers? Yes. Very great. 55% of the people have answered two cell stage at the time of fertilization check. Uh, and two cell stage, 16% uh, have answered two cell stage at the time of 25 to 27 hours. And 18% of the people have answered two cell stage on day two. And 11% have answered two cell stage after 23 hours. Can we move on to the second question? Next question, please. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am, I was not able to launch the next poll. Okay, uh, no problem. Can we move on to the third one? Okay, ma'am. Saiti, what's the issue? Uh, sorry, sir, I was not able to launch the question. I don't know. Station. So, okay, ma'am. Let's move on, sir. Actually, okay, the yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I resolved the issue. Uh, we can launch the sixth question. Here, the question is, does the time of yearly cleavage vary with your ICSI or IVF? We have already explained that fertilization check should be done little early for ICSI and little late for your IVF. So keep that in mind and answer this question. Does the time of yearly cleavage check vary with your ICSI or IVF? Yes or no? Can we get the answer, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes is 86%. No is by 14% of the people. And our second, uh, last third question is? Okay. Cleavage stage embryo represents what? Phase of cell division. Actually, I have uh, previously told you we should understand the basic cell cycle or the biology of the cell and then only we can select the embryos. So to understand this, you should know early cleavage stage embryo represents the stage of cell division. It is meiosis one, mitosis one, or meiosis two, or mitosis two. Can we have the answers? 
It is meiosis 1 by 18%, mitosis 1 by 18%, meiosis 2 by 33%, and mitosis 2 is by 32%. I think we should have clear idea about, this is the last question, right now? For this? Yes, ma'am. For this session. Uh, the last, yeah. For the first question, early cleavage stage represents. I'll uh, tell you the answer in the slides. For this, the last question is, uh, we can see the answers for these, all these three questions in the next session. Uh, upcoming session, yeah. Early cleavage cell uh, can be regarded as, what is the exact definition? Early cleavage means you should see two clear cells, discrete cells after 25 hours post insemination. It is uh, mentioned in the study actually, uh, in our previous speaker also, he mentioned that you should see two cell stage embryo at uh, 26 plus or minus one hour or two hours. So th that also states that Kana Istanbul consensus also states the same. So early cleavage check should be done 25 hours after insemination. So when you see no discrete two cells, either it is in 2 p.m. stage or in the fertilization stage, not you're not able to see the two discrete cells you can take that embryo as a no early cleavage embryo or non-early cleavage embryo. So usually the early cleavage check is performed 25 hours post in fertilization. And in olden days itself, it has been proposed as a simple method for selection of embryos. So first cell cleavage generally occurs four hours earlier after sperm injection in ICSI, that is, than your conventional IVF. So the answer for the first question is, 25 hours post uh, uh, is your answer for early cleavage. And is there any time difference between ICSI and IVF? Yes, it is time difference is there. In this study, it is given as four hours. In the later on studies in 2004, they have given early cleavage should be done 23 to 26 hours after ICSI and 25 to 28 hours after insemination. The same thing also correlates with the recent Istanbul consensus that is 26 plus or minus two hours. Why it is important to read this? We should understand the cell biology, that is the point. So to understand that, the cell cycle in the human embryos are different phases. First thing, completion of meiosis. This is what we have answered asked in the third question. So completion of meiosis is completion of uh, metaphase two when the, it is getting fertilized by your spermatozoa, the meiosis gets completed. And the cell, after completing meiosis, it is entering into the phase of mitosis. Meiosis is a cell reduction division. Mitosis is a cell multiplication division. So here the basic understanding is your cell is going to divide. That's all. So it is going to multiply in its cell number and blastomeres is going to increase in number. So the first, after completing your meiosis, it enters the gap phase, that is G1 phase. Here only you are having the appearance of pronuclei. After that, yes, phase comes. Here only your chromosome replicates. And then again, it enters a gap phase that is called G2 phase. Again, your mitosis is getting completed. That is M phase. Here only the replicated chromosomes segregate into two and two cells are divided. The exit from the M phase, that is mitotic phase, is regarded as culmination of first cell cycle. This is mitosis one because the mitosis is happening for the first time. And it is happening usually in 22 to 30 hours after the sperm entry. Coming to the same explanation with uh, pictorically, human egg is getting fertilized by the spermatozoa, meiosis is getting completed. You can see 2 pn to polar body, and it is entering the phase of mitosis, where you can see the cell division is happening. Cell is single cell is dividing into two cell and four cell like that. So the answer is mitosis one. Why this is important? Again, the nuclear maturity, we can confirm by the extrusion of polar body. We don't know about the cytoplasmic maturity. Here in this article, they have given an explanation that cytoplasmic maturity is better synchronized in your early cleavage embryos because it has high metabolic fitness and that is the availability of ATP, mRNA, mitochondria, etc. And the contribution of spermatozoa is additional factor where the humans uh, they get the centrioles that control the first mitotic division that has been introduced by your spermatozoa. And this is another explanation that is differential variability of the sperm to stimulate your calcium current in the, inside the oocyte. And the oocyte has different capacity to respond to your 
to that calcium current. So this is responsible for the first cleavage that is mitosis. Again, the gap phase, G2 phase to M1 phase, trium phase transition in the cell cycle is more important. And this is uh, dependent on calcium currents inside the oocyte. Again, one more explanation is given is DNA status of the spermatozoa can also influence the early cleavage. And usually we know that aneuploid chromosomal status embryo will cleave more slowly than uh, euploid status embryo. So these are all the basics behind this early cleavage and let us move on to literature evidence. So coming to the literature evidence, there are so many uh, literatures which are uh, stated in the olden days, that is before uh, 2010. So these are all the uh, evidences. Here they have uh, calculated 599 embryos which showed early cleavage stage and 1379 embryos which is to know, not showing any early cleavage. Here they have taken two scoring system. One is early cleavage alone and pro-nuclear scoring system. And they have found that it is a early cleavage is a better independent marker of your implantation potential than your pro-nuclear scoring system. This is another study which again supports your early cleavage to predict your higher pregnancy rate and implantation rate. Here also they have also concluded that early cleavage embryos yield a high good quality embryos than your late cleavage embryos. Again, they have also compared your pregnancy rate and implantation rate. And they concluded that it is a strong predictor of embryo potential. This is also another study. All these studies, you can check the, the hours of early cleavage check may vary little, 25 to 28 hours. So the embryo transfer was done, in the study, embryo transfer was done is irrespective of the early cleavage and they have the, assessed only the pregnancy rate. So the pregnancy rate was significantly higher in the early cleavage rate embryos. So this is again a older study which compares 200 patients. Here in this table, you can find group one is uh, embryos without early cleavage and group two is embryos with early cleavage. You can see clinical pregnancy, implantation, everything is better and abortion rate is lesser than non-cleavage embryos. And this is another study which compares the blastocyst formation rate. All the previous studies have compared uh, implantation pregnancy rate. Here they have correlated with blastocyst formation. Again, early cleavage embryo yield a good day three embryos and also better blastocyst rate. Here we cannot uh, conclude that early cleavage alone is transferred. So another study was done with single embryo transfer which is early, uh, shows signs of early cleavage. Here again, they have proved higher clinical pregnancy with early cleavage. This is another study which is with, uh, done with single embryo transfer. Here again, a large number of embryos again were analyzed for prediction of blastocyst also. And a good logistic regression was applied to find out the results. And this conclusion was also in favor of early cleavage. So again, this is an, another study predicting your pregnancy rate and implantation rate, which was better. And this is another study to predict early cleavage is a better to select the embryos. Ultimately, we don't want clinical pregnancy implantation like that. We will depend on a live birth rate. Ultimately, we want this live birth rate. So this is the one recent study which is published regarding the live birth rate. Again, you can see the better, higher pregnancy rate, clinical impl implantation rate, and uh, always better in clinical, uh, sorry, early cleavage embryo. This is the only study which uh, compares the live birth rate and abortion rate, which is not uh, greatly significant between your early cleavage and non-cleavage embryos. So pregnancy rate and live birth rate is not clinically significant. So here they have given an explanation that for XC, early cleavage check should be done two hours earlier than your IVF. All these evidences are very old. You may feel that. So moving on to your time lapse. Time lapse, I have already explained you certain terminologies. So what is T2, what is T3 and what is T5? T2 is the time of two cells when you get a two discrete cells. Again, Cruz et al. in 2012. So they have concluded that T2 should occur between 24.3 to 27.9 hours. That is again... Again, correlating with our 25 to 28 hours. They have taken these three markers and they 
concluded that that is a better predictor of uh, good quality embryos. Again, in 2010, three parameters were found to predict a better blastocyst formation rate. Again, this you can see P2, the interval between the first mitosis and the second mitosis is important for prediction of better blastocyst formation rate. So here, these three taking the, these three parameters into account, you can have 94% sensitivity and 93% specificity. Again, coming to time-lapse uh, evidences, Duration of first cytokinesis was important, was concluded by Krieger at et al. at 2013. Here they have analyzed 571 embryos using a time lapse technology. And among these four parameters, you can see the importance of duration of first cytokinesis. This is again another evidence showing you the importance of T2. Here again, 432 embryos were analyzed by time lapse, and logistic regression was was done to predict the blastocyst formation rate. So based on this, we have enough evidence to select our embryos based on early cleavage. Then how to select further? We, should, we cannot depend actually on a single parameter. So first of all, I should know whether we have the habit of selecting embryo based on the morphology or not. So for that, we are having another polling. We can have the question. Do all the day three embryos reach your blastocyst stage or not? Do you believe in morphology? Say yes or no. If so, because of what? In vitro culture condition is the reason or embryo is not competent. What do you feel? Can we have the answers? Yes, ma'am. Very great. So, yes, no is the right answer. Do or, or do all the day three embryos will not reach the blastocyst? It is true. It is because both in vitro culture conditions and the embryo is not complex. So, with this. We are going to select the embryos. We don't know whether it is reaching blastocyst. Nowadays, we are all moving on to the blastocyst transfer. Very, very little number of people are doing day three transfers. Even for them, we should know how to select the embryos. So the, when you are getting directly the doing HC and when you are opening the incubator and taking out and seeing a good blastocyst, you cannot select the embryo directly. You have to have periodical check on the embryo. That is 25 to 26 hours post insemination. You have to have two discrete cells with two equal blastomeres and no fragmentation. 42 to 44 hours post insemination, you should have four or more blastomeres with less than 20% fragmentation. And 66 to 68 hours post insemination, you should have eight cells or more blastomeres and less than 20% fragmentation. This is a morphological uh, classification taken from Gardner. And we can now uh, correlate the same with your Istanbul consensus also. And this is another, uh, uh, what to say, flow chart, which is uh, helping you to select the embryos based on fertilization check, cleavage check, periodical check for, till your blastocyst stage. Here also this uh, classification or the flow chart also supports your day two check. That is not on day two check, exactly of 25 to 26 hours, you should have a uh, two cell stage. It is not on day two, right? So to check the efficiency of my lecture, I want to uh, just you people answer by yourself. Is this an early cleavage embryo or not? Because you are having the time here. It is post 17 hours after XC, it is 2 p.m. 21.4 hours after XC, it's again 2 p.m. 34.5 hours after XC is, it is giving two cells. So, according to me, this delayed. That is, we should need two cell discrete cells after 25 to 27, 28 hours. XC, it is 24 hours. Again, early cleavage check for this. When you see 21 hours post XC, lot of embryos here. So many get fertilized with 2 pn. And one thing you can see here is two cell stage. So, this is your early cleavage, but it is too early. Somebody have answered that. 
the infertilization check itself, you can get two cell stage. That is not early cleavage. That is very too fast, according to me. So to conclude, early cleavage check can be considered as an important parameter to predict your blastosis rate. Again, studies have proven higher, better implantation rate, clinical pregnancy rate, everything. So nowadays, we are restricted to transfer the number of embryos only to two or day three or one or two blastoses. So we should select based on the uh, morphology with the early cleavage to reduce the multiple pregnancies and also the time to pregnancy can be reduced by your better selection. Some evidences uh, shows that and uh, studies with time lapse also supports your T2, that is the time to two cell. And please do not miss your early cleavage check. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ananta. Very excellent uh, presentation. I think uh, it is very important factor to know about that early cleavage. On the basis of that, we can select and deselect the embryo. And uh, uh, there are, I think there are one or two questions. Uh, there is uh, one question. What could be the reason if we get oocyte M2 without OCC complex? I don't know if it is relevant to you or not, but this is the question in the chat box. M2 oocyte without OCC complex, what do they mean, sir? Without zona is what, what OCC complex. I cannot understand Maybe the question itself. Without, I think without cumulus complex. Maybe without uh, granulosa cells or like that. It can be due to the pickup uh, techniques, sir. Actually, the cumulus, mm -hmm. uh, the corona, can, sorry, cumulus cells can be uh, what to say uh, fractured or uh, it can be get uh, dispersed due to the increased pressure during aspiration. They could be post mature eggs also. Post mature eggs. Hindu, can you please uh, continue? Yeah, if I mean, if they, uh, if uh, what I understand is that there is a lack of cumulus mass around the oocyte, just the egg. She does not, or the uh, participant does not mention whether it is zona free or not. Without OCC means I uh, interpret it as without the cumulus mass. That could be a post mature egg. So in a cohort, there are times when we get such eggs where you get just the egg, there is nothing around it. So that could be, I mean, um, because there are too many follicles, one of them is too big in size or due to there is um, 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 the wrong timing of trigger and therefore they have become post-mature. So yes, uh, without cumulus is post-mature. Ma'am, can I read the questions? Uh, yes, ma'am, please. When we do individual droplet culture, why fertilization check is still important? Because we can't do anything with 1 or 3 p.m. Why can't we directly check on day 3? Day, we can't check directly because you have already mentioned that 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. we have to rule out. We can't do anything with that, but it can also give rise to a good blastosis, which you cannot identify directly on the day five or the day three. Day three, it can also give rise to a good quality embryo, good morphologically good embryo. So fertilization check is important according to me. Even recent papers have shown the live birth rate with the 3 pn and 1 pn uh, oocytes. I mean, cannot do anything means we can we cannot change, but then we can at least segregate those. When we check fertilize, for fertilization, we can segregate those and uh, see their progress. Yeah, you, you are absolutely right. Because uh, uh, how can you uh, deselect that kind of embryo, 1 pn and 3 pn? If yes. they will develop on good uh, cleavage embryo on day 3, then how you uh, justify that you are putting uh, best embryo or not? Basically, this polyspermy embryo, when we have triplody or more, uh, yeah. PN, yeah. even if the lady get pregnancy, it might land up into miscarriage. miscarriage. So we should not, yeah. uh, you know. So, uh, uh, we are, as a responsible embryologist, we yeah. should think about the healthy pregnancy live birth, not uh, like that uh, anything uh, can happen and implant and 
after some time this uh, will uh, in land up in miscarriage or missed abortion like like that so uh, uh, yeah yeah please please dr bindu please yeah at first check whatever abnormal fertilization we see those can be segregated at least we can those will be the last ones if at all to select if they form embryos and blastocysts which they sometimes may but we know that we are selecting such embryos for transfer yeah. if at all Right. And with the, uh, I mean, telling the patient that this was the fertilization pattern. So, uh, because we cannot absolutely discard them if they have formed good embryos on day three or bl uh, blastocyst on day five, because they have formed. And there are instances where we have good pregnancies, like healthy life birth arising out of such embryos also. But then we have to know that we have transferred such a thing. If at all, I'm saying, I emphasize on if at all. Yeah. If there is no other alternative left but to transfer yeah. such an embryo in that case. Right. So I Last think, question uh, is, uh, what is the epigenetic status of embryos cleaving early? Epigenetic status, actually, I uh, don't uh, come across the epigenetic evidence now. Actually, we have a uh, we have to understand the cell biology of the embryo because we have to we are going to select the embryo based uh, we should not select the embryo based only on the morphology we should understand actually what is happening inside the cell epigenetic variations actually we can we if we do that study alone separately it has to be done in future to study the epigenetics as far as now there are no studies uh, regarding this uh, question I think uh, Nidhi, we have to move. Uh, no? Carry forward to the next panel yeah, discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank so you, thank panel... you, Ananta. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank you so good. much, ma'am. So the panel discussion is on challenges faced at day three and or the beginning. So we have two dynamic moderators. I call them both my seniors with a uh, smile, heartwarming smile. And I would like to introduce the first moderator, Dr. Bindu Chimute, ma'am. Ma'am uh, is the Joint Secretary of IFS with Abra chapter. She's the IVF scientist and consultant clinical embryologist. Yoshita, you can move ahead. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, Please move ahead. Yeah. Directly start Ambra. the panel. Directly start the panel. Okay, ma'am. But just two lines, ma'am, uh, for okay. everyone. I would like to introduce. I'll, can I have Charu ma'am's uh, introduction? Yeah, ma'am. Charu ma'am is scientific head and consultant embryologist at 49 Fertility Center, Sikandrabad and having uh, nearly 30 decades of experience. Can I have the next CV, please, for all our panelists? Like we have six cells in cleavage. We have six wonderful panelists today from all across India. Can I have the next CV, please? I'll start with the introduction. I'd like to uh, introduce Dr. Mahindra Balodia, sir. Sir is a lab director right, of the Fertility Institute. No problem. Institute. Yeah. <laughs> Again, with the more than two decades of experience. Uh, welcome, sir. Then Nishar Chumke, sir. He is scientific director and chief embryologist of Vasundra Fertility Center, Nagpur, and lab director at in Icon Hospital and Nucleus IVF, Nagpur. Then next, I would like to welcome Dr. Parag Nandi, sir. Sir is scientific director and clinical embryologist at Cradle Fertility Center, Kolkata. Next is Dr. Meeta Sharma. She is Senior Consultant Embryologist, Department of Reproductive Medicine, Mahatma Gandhi Medical College, Jaipur. Welcome, ma'am. Dr. Srikant is Senior Manager Embryology at NOVA IVF Fertility. Welcome, sir. And last, our wonderful panelist is Shivanand Rao S. He is a Clinical Embryologist at Boone IVF Fertility Center, Hyderabad. Ma'am, please take over, ma'am. Bindu, can you please share the screen? Okay, can you see the slide? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, so th thanks so much for uh, this wonderful webinar today. It's a wonderful topic, I must say, all about cleavage stage embryos. So uh, wh whether we get stuck at cleavage stage or what is the road ahead? So I look forward to a wonderful panel discussion today with such wonderful panelists here. Uh, Charu, would you like to start? Yeah. Uh, can you just move on the slide, please? Yes. Yeah.
So uh, we as an embryologist or we say as a reproductive scientist, the ultimate goal of our uh, IVF cycle is pregnancy and the live birth rate. So that is the first goal. The second goal is what, how do we reduce the number of embryo to be transferred so that we will not have the risk of OHSs, we will not have the risk of multiple pregnancy and there should be a live healthy birth. And for that, the implantation, you know, that uh, as we call it, it is a very simple yet complex procedure. So it's not like a host and guest uh, formula, but there are many things which is involved here. And this pictorial, you know, um, says that there are so many things which plays a role for the successful implantation. So wh how, what are the role of cleavage stage and what are the role of, you know, blastosis when we transfer? Does it affect the implantation? Does it affect the pregnancy rate? And what, um, which gives the best outcome? That is the main goal for our panel discussion. And if you observe this slide, it says that there are so many changes which is occurring from, you know, from the, as uh, our earlier speaker told that meiosis 2 will happen at the fertilization, then mitosis 1, mitosis 2, then the paternal factors from means genomic uh, activation will go and then the blastosis formation. So many changes occurs uh, at the genetic level, at the morphological level. And so many factors involve either maternal factors, age factors, you know, paternal factors, DNA, oxidative stress, so many things which plays a role for not only a good quality viable embryo, but also has that, you know, viability to implant and uh, have the successful live birth. So that is the all about the from gamete to embryo. Yeah. Next slide, please. So uh, there are two roads. Either we <coughs> go for day three transfer or we go for the day five transfer. So what do we select? What are the physiological factors that uh, do not favor day three transfer? And what are the factors? Uh, my friend Nisha is smiling. He is all for a day five. <laughs> so he's all ready to, you know, with his all answers. And you know, know my answers. Transfer. <laughs> yeah, I know your answer. And we had something uh, good in the, uh, means after this panel discussion. Definitely. So definitely. to make this, you know, uh, panel more interesting, uh, me and Bindu has made some six uh, cases, uh, case studies where we can uh, be learning that what will be the best for the good outcome and which is, you know, patient based and which is uh, having, uh, giving a good oh, outcome. So as long as when the cleavage stage is concerned, so let, let the panelists answer, like, yeah. uh, what are the factors, physiological factors do you think that govern um, your decision regarding not doing a day three, day, day three transfer? So maybe uh, Dr. Uh, Parag, Nishad, anyone can answer this? The physiological factors, we are not talking of embryonic factors yet. Uh, the physiological okay. part, uh, yeah, okay, Parag, you go ahead. No, no, Nishad, you can go ahead, anyways. <laughs> uh, so you can start or I can start. Okay. I'm actually okay. driving. Sorry uh, to be uh, you know, joining late. Uh, yeah, yeah. Today is a happy new year. Of, uh, I want to oh. uh, you know, <laughs> say happy new year, Bengali new year today. Right. Right. Sure. I'm with my family. So this is the question. If this is like in, in our daily practice, what I uh, see, physiological factor, if you say like, you know, any any kind of, you know, if the patient is having a history of previous, you know, implantation failure, uh, you know, and if it was, uh, uh, it is to be uh, hatched or something like that, then I, I prefer, generally we do 99% cases in my clinic, I, I go for uh, day five transfer. But yes, if the, you know, the number of embryos are this, then really we have to see Yes, two case basis, and if it is a history of previous failure or something like that, the, uh, physiological factors, Doctor Parag. Uh... Physiological factor. If you were, uh, you know, if the of the patient you are talking about, yeah. 
Yes, I mean, at why wouldn't you want to transfer on a, a cleavage stage, day three embryo? Why wouldn't you transfer? For example, this slide uh, has certain points. If you would like to elaborate on these, I cannot read. Uh, okay, I'll, 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 read I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So I now. have not seen it it. what slide. Me. I don't know. Okay. Anyways, I'll start with the basic stuff. I can't read what is going on. Anyways, physiological factors. That can't I you like see the um, uh, I can. It's on. It's on my phone, so I need to okay, bring it okay. close. It's okay. I can speak. So the main thing is basically we always forget is the sperm. If the DFI is high, if the patient, uh, if uh, the SOAT situation is there, there will be a problem that it will not form a good blastocyst. Either it will not form a blastocyst in the first place because of higher DFIs and age in some cases with the patient or the husband is more than, you know, just for example, just don't quote me here, but maybe more than 43, 44 years. So most of in such cases, you'll find that they don't become blastocyst. And also if they become blastocyst, because we are not only talking about day three, the thing is that it will be a C-grade blastocyst. The implantation chances of a C-grade blastocyst are very less as, and also that there will be some epigenetic factors that will be involved. So male factor is very important. Second is also the age of the female um, because- I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you short. Yeah. We'll have these questions as case okay. study later on. What we okay. meant by physiological factors is that, that physiologically it is a premature uterine environment. It is different okay. from fallopian tube that way. So, uh, supra, supra physiologically raised E2 levels. Uh, yeah, definitely. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. Huh, I'm, that, that I'm is, coming to that. Kind of yeah, basically, it is a asynchrony between the embryonic Correct. growth and the uterine cavity. Yes, right? Nisha, Dr. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. So, there could be inaccurate morphological gradation on day three. Then there are chances of chromosomal abnormality. And of course, the homeostatic stress. Uh, uh, on the embryo at day three, which could reduce the implantation rates. And similarly, then uh, if you extrapolate the same physiological factors to a blastocyst stage uh, embryo. So what are the factors that govern your choice of doing a blastocyst transfer? So conversely, just as you had a uh, premature uterine environment at day three, at day five, we are talking about improved uterine and embryonic synchronicity, reduced pulsatility, so superior selection of viable embryos, modest selection against aneuploidy rates. We are not uh, uh, ruling out aneuploidy, but yes, uh, the selection becomes uh, more uh, focused. Then transfer of fewer, higher quality embryos and higher implantation and lower multiple birth rates. So these were the answers that we were looking at for the physiological factors that govern your choice of day three or day five transfer. So now coming to the actual question, um, Charu, yeah, so uh, this case uh, has a 39-year-old uh, woman presented with the N evaluation and her FSH level is 9, AMH is fine and uh, at her first IVF cycle, 7 eggs were retrieved, 6 fertilized, 6 cleaned. But the morphology uh, and the grading of the embryos is either B grade or C grade, grade 2 or grade 3. In her, uh, still she has, you know, two uh, FET cycles and both uh, she didn't conceive. She is not ready for the donor cycle. So uh, now first question is why the poor quality embryos? And what is your uh, message or uh, what is your uh, decision for this case uh, to advise that couple either go for the conception? for the next considering cycle? Well, from the pictures, I can see that uh, none of them are good uh, embryos. So first of all, the idea is to go for blastocyst and then decide. You're wasting two cycles of the patient and which is actually proven that uh, she did not conceive during the fresh and frozen cycle. At least I can see two uh, B and the last one, which has the potential to become a blastocyst. The rest will not become a blastocyst. And even if they become a blastocyst, we have to also include the uh, sperm factor and the late paternal effect. So Sorry, the blastocyst it's... quality will also determine whether it's going to be a decent side blastocyst to transfer or not. So we should wait till blastocyst stage and then transfer. The counseling should be done in that matter and not, you know, waste the patient cycle. And then even if she's not ready for donor, then she has to be convinced that wait till blastocyst, we have to make sure whether it becomes a blastocyst or not. There where lies the technique of having a better counselor. Uh, Dr. Mahindra, yeah. would you like yeah, to say yeah. something? So, uh, yeah, in this, in this case, there is a, also, we can evaluate the male factor also because there is a, no much history about the male factor. So, we can 
say is there is a severe male factor or whatever this is also a response there is no male no? factor there is no okay. male factor here okay fine so this though so we can also check the fertilizer means the protocol stimulation protocol right we can see the follicle size we can see the estrogen level and also see the progesterone level on the uh, trigger level so the, all these factor are also affecting on the follicle maturity and all these things so we can check the protocol is with and it is also not necessary that in second cycle the similar embryo can form so we can also change the protocol also in next cycle so we can do like yeah. that. see the dr meeta sharma would you like yeah. to add anything meeta uh, yes, ma'am. I think that the since the FSH is nine yeah. and uh, the AMH is one, so either the as Dr. Mahendra has told, the either the stimulation protocol should be changed in the next cycle, and the patient should be counselled as Nishad said for the extended culture of the embryo, so as to reduce the financial as well as the emotional stress of the, on the patient. Right. Do you feel because, the age of thirty nine? Yeah. Then, that's, uh, yes. Yeah. It, basically, it is. Uh, advanced age is linked yeah, to yeah, the yeah. Any, uh, oocyte aneuploidy also. So oocyte aneuploidy along with fragmented embryos or poor, uh, poor quality embryos, I think extended culture should be advised to the patient in the next cycle. Yeah, yeah that along was the with change in stimulation yes. protocol. Yeah. Yeah. That was the main focus of this question that the patient is 39 years 39 old years and with the advanced maternal age, the chances, the first and foremost is the quality of the oocyte itself originating from a woman of 39 years old, then the quality of the embryo and finally the conception rate. So as this graph shows less than 35, 35 to 39 and 39 and above. So what are the chances of conception? This also have to be explained to the patient. And the major problems arise because in an elderly woman, the chances of chromosomal abnormalities are high. So the aneuploidy rate would be higher in such a case. Therefore, the, it would be better to shift to blastosis. So would the panelists agree to this? So now with this case, I think we all have in the one uh, uh, like uh, decision that clinical parameters has to be checked. As uh, Dr. Mahendra said that uh, stimulation uh, uh, protocol, E2P and all that. And as long as lab past is concerned, we should go for the blastosis culture. And in this case also, there is a no need of the donor oocyte because already we got the good number of seven right. oocytes. So yeah, yeah. exactly. Absolutely. Correct. No, because there are people at uh, an advanced maternal age, they... Uh, beforehand only say that your uh, quality of eggs will be poor and therefore the resultant embryo quality would be prior, uh, poor so that is not at all a good practice we should give the patient a chance because one good blastocyst is all that we need for a successful pregnancy can we move on to the next uh, yes, question yes. Yeah. okay so now we have this 36 year old <coughs> non-obstructive azuspermia he has a normal karyotype 46xy Wife is 30, 31 years old. They have been married for eight years. They have been advised surgical sperm collection, the testicular sperm aspiration. So five eggs were retrieved. All five were M2. They fertilized and cleaved. On day three, one embryo was grade A. One was grade, uh, I mean, A, A, B kind. And the third was grade B. So whether to transfer the embryo on day three or culture till day five, and what is the chance of a day three embryo making it to blastocyst stage? And then in such a case, what is the chance of implantation or early pregnancy loss? Because we are talking about a non-obstructive azuspermia patient. So what would be your take on this? What would be your approach towards this couple? Anyone uh, who has not uh, answered till now? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. We can culture till day five, ma'am. Okay. Because uh, the patient age is looking like uh, it's somewhere around 31 years. So Yeah, but the male is 36 with non-obstructive azuspermia. Non-obstructive yeah. azuspermia. And uh, like it's like we have retrieved five oocytes and uh, three are fertilized, ma'am. And uh, all three are looking like grade one only, ma'am. Almost grade one and grade three. So there are chances of getting a blastocyst on day five. Shrikan, what do you say that uh, is there any difference in the blastocyst formation in ejaculated sperm and the surgical retrieved sperm? Uh, not in my uh, experience, but uh, <laughs> definitely uh, 
there are many ifs and buts when the tissue sample used with the clinicians will it form or will it not form and especially when there are less number of uh, embryos available so definitely there will be a dialogue and a di uh, discussion with the uh, in in my scenario with the clinicians as well as with the uh, patient as well uh, to come to a consensus whether we are going to take them to day 5 or we are going to freeze them and uh, on day 3 and use them in the next uh, subsequent uh, frozen embryo transfer but if so, you are if you are a decision maker what will be your I'll decision take, i'll take them to day 5 because there are two grade a's and uh, the third one is also grade b see it is an inter observer variation b <coughs> uh i'll take them to a day 5 okay, okay what are the chances that they will not form a blastocyst looking at um, this non obstructive azoospermia and late paternal effect so is there any role of late paternal effect in the formation of blastocyst yes see uh, if i can answer on yes yes, yes please yes uh, in this case in my uh, in my view see if the patient uh, you know uh, can you know day 5 we if, if if i would have uh, transferred then i would have day 5 because it will minimize the you know uh, burden of uh, to the patient as we are discussing in the previous case because the, if uh, we transfer on day 3 and then it doesn't form because but on day 3 after day 3 the male genome activation will be happening okay that is the most crucial thing and if the egg was good but here i can see the egg was also i think it was a dewer case so maybe the uh, you know egg at least has having two cascades of you know rectifying the male genome error so uh, if that also fails then it won't go to the day 5 so if it doesn't go to day 5 then there is no point of uh, transferring on day 3 because it will uh, go into you know as non obstructive azoospermia so maybe uh, it won't uh, transform into a very good blastocyst but if it goes to a blastocyst then we can go ahead and do a, uh, you know uh, uh, you know any other criteria is then we'll do hatching and we'll transfer that is the uh, that is mean my view anyone would like to add anything yeah, else actually obstructive azoospermia is directly not affect the blastocyst formation if there is any genetic uh, problem Then in the sperm, then it may be affect the blastocyst formation. So in that case, we also go for the sequential transfer. Maybe we transfer one embryo, transfer one day three, and second to keep for the blastocyst and check the whether the embryo is forming or not. So we can just go for also check for the next cycle. We can see whether is the blastocyst form or not in this case. Okay. Uh, anyone would like to, Dr. Meeta? Would you like to add something? Uh, I as per my consideration i think i'll go for day 3 transfer only because uh, we since we don't have any choice we don't have any choice of the embryos we are having day 3 we have five embryos we are having three embryos only right five five Five, no, three, three embryos. Only three only three embryos. embryos. All were M two or three, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. we are having three. three yeah, yeah, we are having only three embryos. And basically, if we talk about the ploidy level of the embryos, it is not going to change whether we do transfer on day three or whether we do transfer on day five, because extended culture we are doing only for the selection of the good blastocyst, right? Mm -hmm. so if even the good blastocyst is formed on day 5 and there is a paternal effect from the male partner so that the, the, the blastocyst will be also also be aneuploid on day 5 also even good class good uh, quality blastocyst are also aneuploid so i think if i have to take decision i'll go for day 3 only so now we have, three, uh, uh, now we have a three now we have a three answer from three panelists One is day three, one is day five, and one is sequential transfer. Right. So I would, I would like to put in. Uh, see, yeah. basically, day five is a better aspect because I still stress on one thing that you have to counsel the patient and not give them false hope. They are coming for cycle, putting money and psychological stress and everything. If you tell them in the beginning that the, oh. the blastocyst <laughs> is not formed, that pain is easier than the pain of not getting pregnant. that it's not going to happen and i don't like this bhagwan bharose attitude of nahi ho raha to day 3 transfer kar do wait for day 5 true 
no nishad i totally agree with you that day 5 is having high implantation potential as come see i'm i'm adding i'm uh, yeah okay, i would like can to I add count, one more thing. Uh, can i put in i would like to add one more thing please i would like to add one more thing to that that in such a case specific case go in for pgt okay. check for it and, yes, and yes, then you transfer that is the correct answer that yeah, is the correct answer the that if we want to take them up to day 5 we have to counsel for uh, counsel the patient for the cycle cancellation and we have to counsel the exactly. patient for the genetic analysis of the blastocyst as per the Uh, effect of uh, 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 due to the non obstructive vasospermia due to the paternal effect on the blastocyst we have to counsel for the genetic analysis and if the patient is agreed for the genetic analysis then there is point on going to day 5 otherwise either you transfer it on day 3 or on day 5 it doesn't matter okay uh, i mean uh, fair enough i would just like to add one thing here on this a panel discussion is not just restricted to day 3 or day 5 we are talking of challenges at day 3 and is it the end or the new beginning so we have to um, focus on the things that happen post day 3 so in the earlier question yes, just yes, as we talked of chromosomal abnormalities here we are talking of late paternal effect how there is sperm chromatin decondensation embryonic genome opening after day 3 so what we should counsel the patient is although your three embryos look good but all three will not form blastocyst or even if a single forms it may not form a great quality if you want to go for blastocyst transfer we, the uh, better option would of course be to go in for blastocyst transfer but with the understanding that because there is a problem male factor involved what could be the chances so that is the answer that we are looking at and also the um, um, uh, male factor leading to recurrent pregnancy loss or early pregnancy loss in such patients so how will you look at this scenario anyone wants to add further to this yeah absolutely fine as you as you yeah, very good very good very good but doing okay. doing pgt for only a single blastocyst yes. uh, would be risky i uh, so that is what i am I was not saying about PGT for that poor patient. Agreed. I'm I'm being specific okay. with this patient because yeah, yeah, yeah. they But are putting in so many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Medically, it was excellent. In, yeah, yeah. Obviously, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, we'll okay, move so, on the yeah. Yeah. What is the blastocyst formation and pregnancy rates? And so these are a few uh, slides that we have included to compare what is the blastocyst formation and pregnancy rates in mild and severe male factor. So uh, of course they are lower, but then. uh definitely with even with severe male factor we have a uh, good chance of blastocyst formation and pregnancy rates and also that the testicular sperm also can form good blastocyst and uh, although it may be uh, it may be also be comparable to ejaculated sperm so this paper says it is a 2018 paper which says that the potential of testicular sperm um to support embryonic development to blastocyst is comparable to that of ejaculated sperm therefore you can really go for blastocyst transfer even in a patient with severe male factor so dr meeta the uh, thing that you were saying that you would like to play safe because there is a male factor involved and no blastocyst might be available for transfer it is uh, it is comparable uh, uh, to day 3 uh, and uh, i mean uh, pregnancy rates and blastocyst formation rates with uh, fresh as well as ejaculated sperm are at the same level so you can take that chance uh similar is the case with micro dissection testicular sperm extraction and again it says that when the uh, only as compared to the frozen sperm the fresh sperm will give a better blastocyst formation rate that is what the study of uh, the latest study of 2023 says so if you are talking of fresh versus surgically retrieved sperm they both are comparable but if you are talking of surgically retrieved but frozen and then used later and fresh surgically retrieved sperm then uh, the fresh sperm gives better blastocyst formation and pregnancy rates are we good with that all panelists agree to that yes yes sure yes 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 please uh, so all of us might have had an experience like uh, even in a frozen tissa sample when used so there are pregnancies comparably they are not so significant but still course, that's what that's what the paper also says that we are not ruling out anything 
but the chances are i mean you have significantly higher with fresh compared to frozen but it's not that there is no blastocyst formation rate uh, or pregnancy at all with frozen there are always uh, cases that, that is why we keep doing all these things there is neither there is not uh, a complete black and white yes and no there is always this always the fresh is more yes yes i just have small issue here wonderful yes. papers most of the papers that we all read we have to take care of the sample size the sample sizes Correct. are no less that yes. all these paper see the i think the p value is 0.5 it's not mm -hmm. significant so you have to take with a pinch of salt whatever the papers are published condition applied good one okay so can we move on Yes. Okay, yeah. so Charu, the next one. Yeah, so uh, this is again a uh, forty years old man. Forty eight. Uh, yeah, forty eight. Uh, though SS is analysis is normal zoos for me, but he is a habit of uh, you know is a smoker and is also having a habit of alcohol. Wife is forty two with primary ovarian reserve, poor ovarian reserve, twelve years married life, previous failed cycles, two sites retrieved, both and two. Both grade one, day three or day five. Uh, so you please focus on the points that we should yeah. look at in, with respect to the cleavage stage and the post cleavage uh, embryonic development also, rather than just sticking to day three or in any case both day five. Yeah. I think here we are seeing two things. One is the age of the male, and is a smoker. So DFI is another factor which needs to be, uh, you know, checked. And after that, you can actually do it. So I think that is not given here. So we are in the limbo right now. But I'll assume that the DFI is high and the age factor is there. So the blastocyst formation rate is going to be less. The counseling has to be done. And after that, you make sure that it becomes a blastocyst or then again, it's the same scenario as in the earlier two cases. So according and to you just got, yeah. so you just got two sides. Is, Wife yes. also, the it's a suicide factor is also important. Because that so, is also age. So, age pe suha hai. <laughs> yeah. so here, that's both what suicide and the sperms, important. they are going to contribute to the aneuploidy. Both are having higher chances that even, even if we are getting the good quality blastosis, chances of aneuploidy are very high. So in Absolutely. that case, we provide counsel for the patient for PGT. This is the ideal so case. So this is the ideal case for the PGT. Uh, I think for that, everyone will be agreeing or the pulling of the cycle. Yeah. Nisha, want to add something? Yeah. One more factor I would like to add, especially in a higher age group, females, women, we have to also take care of the oocyte uh, uh, morpho uh, morphology. We have to check the morphology. In such patients, you'll find the perivit line space is quite large. And there have been papers, especially by uh, uh, Rinzi et al., I think 2011-16, where they have mentioned that the implant, although you'll get a pregnancy, you'll not get an implantation, rate, there'll be miscarriages. So this is what you have to tell the patient also, the counsel, the patient accordingly, and make sure that you don't put in those embryos that is having a larger uh, period line space. So in this case, I think also... But here there is only A and B. So we will put a good one. Okay, yeah, so I, unfortunately, I think all of the panelists have logged in from their mobiles. Yeah. Mostly. So Saturday. you cannot see no, this no, slide, unfortunately, not. because see hmm. the emphasis here, therefore, we said that it is normal zoospermic, but then it is just the semen analysis, the counted modulity with respect to that. Like Nishad said, the uh, DNA fragmentation has to be looked into. We, don't, we have to remember that the male is 48 years old. The wife is 42 years old with POR. As it is, she is an elderly woman. So what we are talking of is the mitochondrial aging, where the energy there are energy constraints on the gametes, whether it is the sperm or the oocyte. So we are talking of mitochondrial aging, the oocyte competence. So even if it may have fertilized, so the uh, activation of the oocyte with the sperm, the oocyte competence, the energy constraints, the mitochondrial aging, sperm DNA fragmentation, of course, and the embryonic stress on the gametes and embryo arising from such elderly couple. So yes, um, as all the panelists have agreed, but then these are the points that we were looking into as a, a I would just like to I would like to add one point. In my yes. experience, I have seen at least three, four patients who had mitochondrial problem that the, it, it embryo looks like that the, all the you know fused uh, kind of uh, you know blastomeres. Uh, 
from the day from, uh, two onwards. Correct. So you can easily you know, understand and there was some mitochondrial defect uh, in the oocyte part. Yes, that's just to add, add on. Yes. yes. Okay. So uh, the next case, please, Charu. Yeah, so here uh, a couple was advised for an IVF cycle for tubal factor. Wants to know that if there is any patient selection criteria for day five culture mm -hmm. based on the patient age. So is there any evidence based, uh, you know, kind of literature or studies which can, you know, has this uh, kind of conclusion that this patient can go for day five culture and this means they, they are... Uh, having more chances for the day five means blastosis and this should not go. So that this is the query of the couple who has come for uh, an IVF cycle. So I think the age is a, not a factor that we can decide for the blastosis culture. There are so many other factors we can decide for the fertilization, quality of the egg and uh, on day three, day four, like that. So age is a, not a, I think, good choice for the blastosis culture. So, so you meant to say that age is not a factor, other embryologic factors? Other, yeah, other uh, embryologic factors we also do calculate for that, yeah. Dr. Shivanan, Dr. Uh, Shivanan has not answered. No, uh, it's the same, ma'am. Okay. So See, it's in not case... age, what are the factors uh, that uh, you would advise the patient that under such scenario, we would like to go for a blastosis transfer. So are there any norms or... Uh, any such things where you have a specific number of eggs or the specific quality of embryos that you would like to suggest to the patient? See, at a lighter note, when a couple is advised for an IVF, for a tubal factor, so instead of uh, asking for whether I can go for a day five transfer or day three transfer, the, the first question what I have is, uh, can I go out here with a positive pregnancy? Right. <laughs> that is your question as a patient. Maybe this patient wants to know that that question. <laughs> See, nowadays, uh, day five is a standard uh, embryo transfer where uh, everybody of us following. Uh, day three is a very... No, Shrikant, this is a very, very important question for couple to know when who is on the borderline of the age. As we say that 35 okay. is little on the higher side, that what is the chances or what are the criteria no. They should have the informed consent that whether we can go to a day five or not, right? Yeah. You know, so as lab yeah. factors also yeah. affect, yeah. but with this, with that, this slide, this paper, which is published in 2008, which yeah. also has, and we also see in our practice that when it's advanced maternal age, it also affects, so, you know, blastosis formation rate. So what are the criteria, what we should observe on day three, which mm. will have uh, that kind of, you know, promise that, okay, not actually promise, but which can have little that, okay, this uh, embryos are, you know, good enough to turn into the blastosis. So as per this paper, uh, the woman below 38, if 4X retrieve 4PN and at least two eight cell embryos of grade one or grade two has a fair chance that that lady will uh, have a good uh, blastosis, provided our lab condition is good enough to take uh, care of the embryonic stress. Blastosis. Yeah. That is at least okay. four embryos from six to eight cell stage on Correct. the three we should be having. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Correct. And yes. if if the woman is above 39 years of age, then we need at least five eggs and yes. five with all five fertilized and uh, at least three with eight to six, six to eight cells six to and eight. seven cells. Yes. So Absolutely. in such cases, we can easily advise. See, then afterwards we go. We may go case to case. But in general, these are the criteria that we uh, uh, that make us decide whether to go for day three or day five transfer. So the number of eggs, the number of fertilized um, um, eggs that we have, and the quality of embryos that we have on day three. See, lab conditions we have just mentioned, Dr. Charu. So, yeah, that's what we are coming to that. We are coming to that. Also. So yes. here we were talking about blastosis culture depends on quality of embryos on day three, not yes. just the quantity. quantity. Yes. 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 Okay, so now we have the next question. Uh, your IVF center has a good pregnancy outcome after shifting to day three embryo transfer. 
for the past eight months. So from uh, the last eight months, you have shifted to day three transfer. Your previous policy was blastocyst culture and transfer, but with poor blastocyst formation and pregnancy rates. So what could be the reasons for earlier poor results and the current improvement in pregnancy rates after shifting to day three transfer? Lab. So, Yes. Here <laughs> yeah, so comes yeah. the main question. Poor quality blastocyst itself indicates your lab conditions has to be checked. Exactly. We have to check first check the lab condition. So I always from... say that VOC is the silent killer. That's the reason. Okay, okay so next there is this beautiful paper which says the effect of short-term disturbance of day three embryo culture on development in implantation. We VOC all is agree. One. What do you say? Yes. No, ha, VOC, I mean, QA, QC in the laboratory includes VOC. Apart from that, would you like to add anything? Yes, everything from your temperature, humidity, particulate count, VOCs, HCHO, especially HCHO. Formaldehyde is the worst one because your blastocyst formation rate is affected by formaldehyde. There are many papers from Balbin to everybody, actually, to Lebner to everyone. So you have to take care that HCHO has to be taken care of. For that, you have to set up extra filters for HCHO, which are actually available in the market. So put on those filters. Maybe you can use alumina. Maybe you can use potassium permanganate. And you, you also use inline filters in your incubators also. So that is going to change. Another factor is also maybe if you want to get a better uh, uh, rate is use good quality water for humidification if you are using a benchtop incubator with humidification. Also, uh, you change the media on day three. And oil layering is very important. If you're using a dry incubator, use heavy oils. That is the other way around. Perfect. And yes, also Mr. the gas Bharat? quality. Yes. And also the yeah, gas yeah. quality. Yes. And any media type? Single or I would, I, I would like to add one more thing to that is the gas quality. What uh, Parag just uh, mentioned is that we use triple gas cylinders or normal gas, CO2 and nitrogen cylinders. The aldehydes, the ketones, especially are based at the bottom of the cylinder. So the Correct. moment a cylinder Correct. is... Yes. The the moment a cylinder is around 20 liters, the jumbo cylinders change your cylinder yes. because you are incorporating Always. a lot of VOCs from the cylinder and the inline filter is not going to work. So yeah, waste perfect. your gas, perfect. save it and you'll get better blastocyst formation rates. So uh, a triple gas filling under pressure is also necessary. I mean pre-mix gas under pressure and then replace the cylinder even when it is 20% uh, still full, you uh, uh, change the cylinder. What about the embryonic stress due to exposure, the exposure time? How much exposure time? Yes, how much exposure time? So overall, every single procedure that you carry out in the laboratory, right from shifting of the embryos, uh, shifting of the oocytes to embryos to doing your ICSI. Exposure yeah, to light and exposure to you know lower temperature, exposure to lower temperature more than 15 seconds can disrupt a the whole, uh, you know, internal genome sequence, genome pattern, and uh, uh, there are, uh, you know, the specific lights uh, to be very careful because, uh, you know, the blue lights is detrimental for the, uh, you know, uh, embryo. So uh, we can use filters for that on the light. See, nowadays you get those uh, lights, those uh, sepia colored lights. I think the wavelength is around 240 to 2, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, 540 to 600 nanometers. So those are the ones that you have to use. If you use, see, we work in normal light, that is absolutely fine. What we have to worry about is the microscope light. That is the uh, reason that will get the exposure is to. So just right. be careful with those light, not your tube lights and room lights and LED lights. They're absolutely fine. They will not affect. There is no pattern photocatalytic effect or photodynamic effect only because you no know, t-dimer is going to be formed by your tube light light first of all let me be very clear only in certain wavelengths especially in uv you have to be careful otherwise there is no problem nowadays you can change your light which is under the microscope that is the only key. so you can work otherwise also any fear of your electromagnetic waves carrying lots no. of mobiles this that inside the lab so there is wi-fi towers everywhere <laughs> Kya <karoge? laughs> even if you don't keep it in the lab there are Wi-Fi towers in the next building next to your house hospital. Nothing can be done. Media, media. Okay, what apart from the laboratory, uh, QA, QC, the media type. Mm, that's what I'm uh, The uh, group culture, micro drop size, anything that can affect the blastocyst formation rate? Blastocyst. Definitely. The Definitely. brand of media that you use, the incubator brand, will that make a difference? 
see there are many parameters the main thing is that your media it can be single step media or it can be sequential media the point is to change it on day 3 irrespective yeah, oil layer should be at least you know at least put in 6 to 7 to 9 ml of oil depending on smaller or bigger dish that is the second part in, okay in micro droplet you are talking the changing of media so what yeah, is yeah. your what in is the choice for micro droplet is fine but the group oil. culture i do not change on group culture i do not change and absolutely uh, we get uh, but in the micro droplet you have to change yeah, group culture is fine yeah definitely but nowadays yeah. the thing is that you have to report every day so if you are reporting every day every single embryo you can't do group culture and see that this is the same embryo that you saw tomorrow or day before yesterday so that is why single culture is the way to go in the future you won't be able to do group culture see in this particular question the question was that you had a lower blastocyst formation and pregnancy rate ब्लास्टेशन रेट Anyway? your sop should your sop should be exactly followed that is the whole point of it then koi bhi embryologist aa jaye unless that is not a skillful embryologist the story is different but they are of same level skills then sop has to be followed that is the bottom line if then there, you will have good blastocyst formation rates there is this uh, problem persisting in the lab so if you have a good number of oocytes and a good number of embryologists available you can always uh, you know try it with uh, two embryologists you know share the oocytes and change if there is any inter operator variation which can uh, you know give you some knowledge about uh, you know performance of an individual also whether it is on the same because we don't have a choice we don't have a luxury or the choice to choose the quality of a uh, oocyte but in the pool from the semen definitely our skill completely depends on selecting a good sperm for the oocytes which are available there from the core so definitely skill definitely plays a role and what i think maybe a normally morphologically good sperm which can give a good blast my co embryologist may think it may not okay so always this thing is there so if you have a good number of oocytes definitely go for a shared ic that can bring the knowledge about the individual skill of an embryologist so the one thing what uh... the article what we all read that is only one thing which is important in the lab everything everything <laughs> yes. yeah. everything is so we move on the lab. next question bindu yes ah uh, what happened ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, sorry uh, can you see no there is some article is coming ah uh, I... <coughs> you lost i that. think i clicked on the so one... you have a uh, 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 close this uh i'll stop and share again wait yeah in the meanwhile can i ask nisha the point yes. yeah yeah go ahead please yeah see in now nowadays uh, for this quality control and these machines came up in the lab which yeah. operate with wifi so which is there um, inside the lab on, on and above a working incubator so how that is going to affect the overall see yeah, already Jairo, talk, can you see right. now no right i uh, we already talked about the electromagnetic waves as charu ma'am mentioned see electromagnetic waves are already there we don't we are not ghostbusters ki hum leg ke check karenge electromagnetic wave kitna hai right <laughs> so the issue is they are already there whether you put your phone inside whether you put a wifi or whether you have a tar next to your building they are going to be there if you are having a microscope or a, pan, uh, a microwave or a pantry near your uh, Uh, lab on the same floor it is going to make electromagnetic waves so not electromagnetic waves directly are not going to affect because there is no paper as such there is not proper research done also i have like at least i have done in 10 labs simultaneously i have not found a difference in the blastocyst formation rate where they have wifi and where they don't have wifi yes. so it is not affecting the blastocyst formation rate as of uh, my experience is concerned that's where they are existing those yeah in a series existing in the market. Okay, unless see, see uh, the now? thing is there yes yes 
they are see if they are long range uh, long wavelength it will not affect short wavelength is micro uh, microwave are the short wavelength uh, microwave uh, wavelengths or electromagnetic waves so they heat up the water molecules and that is how it works it, here emery is not going to get fried by electromagnetic waves so there is no chance Yes. So we have the final question now. Bindu, could you please take it? Yeah. So there is this young PCOS woman, 28 years old. It is her first IVF cycle. You got 28 eggs, 22 were M2, 19 fertilized and cleaved. Here your clinician insists that you freeze all, of course, but freeze all on day three and also uh, the FET should be on day three. As an embryologist, what would you suggest and why? Uh, day five, no. day, day five. Yeah. Yeah, day five. Yeah. We have a good number of oocytes. 19 fertilized and cleaned. I'll, I'll convince that in a clinician to go for a day five. Correct. <laughs> I'll tell the clinician, but not clinician. Yeah. I will <laughs> ask the clinician to buy more. Try, uh, Why do you storage. think the clinician insists on a day three uh, freeze and day three transfer? So maybe the clinician is not convinced with your patients and all these things. It is pure ignorance. And the uh, clinician is very rich. We'll ask them to give us more money and then we'll freeze in our day three. <laughs> That's why I told you don't fight with clinician. Yeah. With due respect to the clinicians, they will fight with day three is better than day five. They might have the main. <laughs> okay, just a general question. Uh, ha uh, does anyone use time lapse here? No, man. No. Oh. Okay, I wanted to know if anyone uses time lapse and yet does day three transfers. No one? I need okay. to know who that person is. It yes, that is good. Okay, <laughs> I will make her short film. <laughs> <laughs> I really want, I was curious to know if uh, someone is doing that. And another is, has anyone gone ahead with a single egg, M2, fertilized, cleaved, and gone ahead with blastosis culture and transfer? Yes. Every year, at least one like yes, yes. <laughs> Every year, I think. Always, always. In spite of the criteria that you should have at least three good and four good and stuff, even with a single embryo, we have gone ahead with a blastosis and more often than not, we have got a pregnancy also out of such an embryo. Single egg, single embryo and single blastosis transfer. Single blastosis and live birth also. Yes, yes that's also true. Many, many, yeah. many. Maybe. That means we all um, follow good uh, practice in the IVF laboratory. Uh, that is what we can say. Good. Yeah. <laughs> See, the blessing that is guys is when there is single oocyte, even the clinician and the patient and the embryologist, three, all the three of them are on the same page. Let us give it a try. So definitely okay. that works out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So at the end, if we have very poor quality embryos, great C embryos on day three, should we discard them? Or is it just the beginning of a new story? Have you any instances to relate where day three embryos you did not discard, but something dramatic happened to them? Maybe yeah. a great C embryo forming a blastocyst? Yeah. Yes, definitely great C embryo can form the blastocyst. But yeah. again, yes. the quality of the blastocyst has to be checked upon if we are going for freezing or you are going for trans to do the transfer in fish cycle. So the it has to be given the chance. The patient has to be counseled that the there are it is grade C embryo on day three. We may no we may not get the blastocyst on day five, but the grade C embryos should be allowed to grow in the lab till day five. And if we get the blastocyst on day five, then obviously we can go for freezing also. Have you come across a situation where it was a grade C blastocyst? On day five or maybe even on day six, but it has given you a pregnancy after transfer? Yes. yes. Yeah. In two instances, yes. I have I had got the pregnancy. Okay. So I like uh, to I share some statistics on that. Yes. Uh, with a grade C, like uh, in situation where most of them are grade C or B minus grade, very low. So in such a we don't have a choice rather than to freeze or transfer. So in such cases, uh, we did uh, some uh, number of cases from it was a multicentric study, and we found that 
with normal blastocyst uh, culture and age group and everything we get a implantation rate of around 42 to 50 52% roughly whereas with such c grade blastocyst it goes down to 27% but it is still 77% so you should go in for that yes so the moral of the story <laughs> is that for us it is statistics that it may be uh, 50% and 20% also maybe not even 27 20% but then for the patient it is 100% if she conceives okay so what Absolutely. is the reason do you think uh, is for this blastocyst uh, uh, sorry the day 3 embryo to form a blastocyst why uh, maybe in this third case if you can see the picture the first, okay, it is a grade C, but still it has a few number of blastomeres. The second also, but in this third picture, if you can see on your screen, it is just about two to three cells, as Dr. Parag has men had mentioned earlier, that it with two to three cells also, it is showing a sign of compaction. Why do you think that a two-cell embryo could form a blastocyst on day five or maybe even on day six? What is the reason for that? Not, no, not, did not get it actually. The question, okay. Uh, the point here is that when we the whole thing about today's topic is challenges faced on day three, so we are not discarding day three embryos, and we still have a great C, very uh, unlikely scenarios where such day three embryos giving us blastocysts. That is because there is something called as totipotency and pluripotency. So, even if a two uh, a blastomere embryo on day three forms a blastocyst that goes on to tell us that that embryo still has a potential that single blastomere also may have a potential to form a blastocyst and that is where the fact about totipotency comes into play that the, each blastomere is totipotent so rather than discarding the embryos it, you may not transfer but at least see what is happening you get to see uh, I mean, if you had discarded on day, day three, you wouldn't know it is forming a blastocyst. You wouldn't know that even there is that 25% chance of it leading to a pregnancy. That is because of something called as totipotency or pluripotency occurring. So we should not trans, um, um, uh, discard day three embryos. We should wait and watch at least till day five, day six, sometimes even day seven, they form good uh, uh, blastocyst and therefore not to discard any day three embryos. This is because of pluripotency of the blastomeres. So uh, it's there's this uh, wonderful paper which says that transfer of poor quality embryos at either day three or day five have lower potential of implantation. However, those embryos which successfully implanted have the same potential for life birth as the embryos of fair and good quality. And therefore, this study supports that it is safe to transfer poor quality embryos when they are the only option left for a transfer, embryo transfer. So, this so is the, okay that when there is a only option. It is not yes. that it is general, but when there yes. is no option with the counseling, we can go ahead uh, with the consent of patient that there is a low chances, but this paper is very beautiful that it successfully implanted and given as a potential for the live birth. So, just as we say that every good quality blastocyst may not lead to a pregnancy. Similarly, every grade C blastocyst may not cause a failure also. So the chances are always there. And if rather than discarding such a day three or day five blastocyst, it is better to transfer if there is no other option available. Rather than discarding, why Absolute. not transfer? Okay. Absolutely. Okay, so what we does the Istanbul con <laughs> consensus say about embryo assessment, Charu? Yeah, so uh, this is what everyone I think we follow here for the Istanbul consensus for the fragmentation and all that. And I think this is covered in our initial uh, two presenter has been done this exercise. So that overall, you know, day three embryos, if it is a good quality, 66% uh, will be, you know, capable of, you know, turning into the blastocyst. 34% is a chance with the grade good. 2 and uh, embryos also. So that is the reason we should not discard as uh, we all, uh, you know, agree that uh, poor quality embryos should be also cultured till uh, day 5. Uh, as long as uh, this is the blastocyst conversion rate uh, with the age, 
Again, 73%, implantation rate, implantation rate is 73% with the woman if it is below 35, 67% between 35 to 39, still 39% with the grade 2 embryos and 26% with the advanced maternal age. So there is also a, you know, individual criteria, but overall it is 26% plus to, uh, implantation rate, which is very good for the 35 to 39 years of age uh, lady. Uh, next slide, please. Pregnancy rates. Pregnancy rate below 35, 54%, very fair enough. 60%, oh, it is <laughs> higher. Uh, poor embryos, 34, 26. So this is also to be considered. And this is one of the nice paper. Even I have done, you know, few studies uh, with this uh, uh, nomogram that uh, with this comparison, the blastosis, uh, which can be predicted, uh, predicted for the good blastosis rate. This is the paper published in 2010, which has a points from 0 to 100. So number of embryos culture on day three. Ratio technique used for fertilization, age of the patient, and total points. So uh, the next slide will uh, tell us that how to calculate these points. Suppose we have a, um, three embryos, uh, uh, ten day three uh, embryos, ten embryos. So that has to be the ten uh, ten points. Sixty percent of top day three embryos, thirty points. Xc zero point thirty years of the lady. 20 points, so it is above 100 points. So this was the probability for achieving blastosis on the day five. And this is a wonderful paper. I think everyone should go through it. And I have done few case studies and it is a very good uh, graph if you just want to uh, check the parameters. That's then, a wonderful uh, predictor of uh, probability of blastosis formation. Yeah, so first it is the mathematical model to predict the blastosis, I think. Yes. So, Bindu, you can uh, just yes. in a nutshell. So, so, finally, in a nutshell, if we talk of blastocyst uh, um, transfer and cleavage stage transfer, of course, blastocyst transfer results in higher ongoing pregnancy rates, higher light birth rates. There may also be higher twin birth rate uh, in both blastocyst as well as in the cleavage stage transfer if we are transferring multiple. But then the beauty of blastocyst transfer is that we can uh, select uh, transfer a single blastocyst. So the clinical uh, pregnancy rate in um, elective single blastocyst transfer was higher than the elective double embryo transfer at cleavage stage. And um, however, I mean, because double embryo transfer at cleavage stage, therefore the implantation rate goes, goes down due to transfer of cleavage stage embryo. So clinical pregnancy as well as implantation rate is higher with elective single blastocyst transfer. And of course, the uh, multiple pregnancy rates with um, single uh, blastocyst transfer is uh, negligible, but about 25% multiple pregnancy rates with double embryo transfer group. So the basic aim that we have of IVF that we want, want a singleton healthy pregnancy can be achieved by transferring, a, by doing a single uh, blastocyst transfer. However, what is the flip side of prolonged culture or continuing the culture to day five is that there is an upregulation of genes for apoptosis and oxidative stress. So your laboratory conditions have to be extremely stringent with proper conditions maintained at all times. So your SOP is in place. And another factor that affects, that may affect is the epigenetic reprogramming and the imprinted genes, which can affect your blastocyst formation and uh, pregnancy rates. So, and finally, practically, if someone is not too sure, is the culture system as good as the uterus and more incubator space, more embryology time and low oxygen tension is required. So you have to uh, manage your incubators, your laboratory to the best possible uh, limits so that you have good blastocyst culture and uh, pregnancy rates. If not, if you're not sure with your laboratory conditions, then no point taking your embryos to blastocyst stage because there are so much, there's so much of oxidative stress and uh, epigenetic reprogramming and all will be affected. So what, what is uh, blastocyst transfer is meant for whom? Virtually from the panel discussion today, I think uh, every panelist has uh, emphasized on a blastocyst culture 
in any scenario we discussed six cases everyone said that for every case we can go ahead with the blastocyst transfer whether it is a male factor or advanced maternal paternal age or even if it is a single blastocyst so virtually for everyone blastocyst transfer can help us so whether it is young elderly elderly women they say there is an hardened zona there is difficulty in hatching so all the more reason that go for blastocyst you may go in for a zona thinning also in such cases and of course if you are doing pgd pgta everything then again uh, doing a blastocyst culture helps so with that i think we have come to the end that despite all these advances despite doing blastocyst culture everything our basic goal remains the same we are all striving for it as embryologists to get that single beautiful blastocyst that will give rise to a healthy life birth so thank you so much to all the panelists for uh, such wonderful inputs charu would you like to add ah uh, that's it i think so any anyone would like from uh, audience can be taken i think 5 minutes and uh, i have a one hour journey to go home any panelists would like to add something <laughs> apart from <laughs> all this that we have said you could have done the panel in the car <laughs> <laughs> no, the signal is a problem. Hyderabad. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Network. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parag is better network. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Parag is better network. Okay. So that is it. Uh, are there any questions or we sign off? <laughs> Doctor Ved. Yes, I think we have done. Yeah. Uh, okay. There is no question. So uh, yeah, there is one question. Nan Kisho. Okay. Acha no no no. This is not question. I think it is. Um, yeah. Thank you, Doctor Ved. Thank you, Doctor Ved, for giving opportunity. Questions have been answered, sir. Ah, yeah, answered. They have been answered, sir. Most of the questions have been answered. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Actually, we that... tried our level best to not restrict it to just. day 3 or day 5 we try to go in for what the what are the mechanisms that occur post day 3 yeah, you know you know that uh, it was very wonderful and excellent panel actually uh, so many things are coming up na for a single cleavage stage we started and we are doing a blastocyst and everything included everything so it is wonderful actually i think uh, people learn so much from this panel and thank you so much dr bindu dr charulata for Uh, moderating this session and thank you all the panelists nishad srikan mahendra ji dr mahendra maine first time aapko i yeah, thank you very much and, for, and oh, thank yeah, you for joining yeah. us dr parag and dr meeta and shivanand of course shivanand is not there yeah he is there so thank you so much for joining us and it was wonderful and see you again for uh, same uh, panel maybe for lecture Uh, thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> thank, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Ananta. Thank you, Ananta. Thank you. Thank you, doctors. Thank you. 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 Thank you